Today, our mortgage consultant that is going to be presenting is Heather Bollinger. Uh, we're excited to present to everyone. My name is James Hansen. I'm I am a marketing manager, and I'm one of the marketing managers in our marketing department. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to say you can ask questions during the webinar. Just use your questions tab, and we'll try to get to those at the very end. So. Uh, just stay on and we'll get to all the questions we can. We usually get to all of them. So if you have a question, put it in the questions tab. Um, also, after the webinar's done, we're going to put this on our YouTube channel. So you can go there and, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can look at former webinars we've done, but we'll put this there. And we're also going to email everyone the video uh, to the webinar and some contact info afterwards so that you can uh, get in touch with Heather and and uh, and we can help you out. So if, with all that said, uh, I'm just going to turn the time over to you, Heather. Thank you, James. Appreciate you. Um, this is our, we call this our first time home buyer webinar, but it's also if you haven't bought a home in a long time or just want some refreshers on what it's like to buy a home. This is one of my favorite topics to, to talk about. And I'm super, super excited to have Beverly Whipple here. She's an agent here in St. George. I'll let her tell you about herself. Hello. So just like Heather, this is my favorite niche of real estate. I've been a full-time realtor here in St. George for almost 10 years. And my favorite section of people are first-time home buyers. I joke that they just have no idea what's going on. They're so sweet and it's it's a lot of work for me, but it is the most rewarding and beneficial to be able to teach and educate and hopefully make an exciting process. So I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you. Very glad that you accepted and are here. Thank you. All right. Go ahead. Um, can you go to the next slide? I don't remember what's on there. Oh, okay. Perfect. So <laughs> there we go. Okay. So just a quick little recap of the loan programs that we have available. So, um, and I'm gonna go into our first time home buyer product in a little more detail, but um, we've got just your standard conventional, um, which would be up to 90 or as low as 3% down up to a loan up to 766,000. We do have FHA and VA available. We've got fixed rates on our short terms we also at well and long term we have um a couple arm products available especially for jumbo loans we've got some great in-house short-term products with no loan costs we've got construction loans um including jumbo construction loans lot loans and regular jumbo loans for purchasing and refinance go to the next screen Okay, so our first time home buyer program, there's typically if some, well, okay, first of all, if you've got 5% down um, or more, congratulations, you don't need a first time home buyer loan. They're great to help people get into homes, but we want to weigh all options and see which one actually makes the most financial sense for you. But with our first time home buyer loan, we will finance up to 100% of the purchase price. And then you're just responsible for the closing costs and escrow setup. Fifteen hundred must be your own funds. The remainder can be um, a gift or a seller credit or a combination of both of those. And the great benefit of it is it has no mortgage insurance, so it does have a little bit higher rate. But without having mortgage insurance, sometimes it ends up being cheaper than a three percent down or an FHA loan. All right, this is one where Beverly and I are, are both going to talk about um, getting ready to buy a home and the things that, that you can ex expect. So you want to first consult with a loan officer. And for me personally, I will just do a, like a, I'll run hand numbers so that I'm not, I'm not pulling your credit. We're just going to have a conversation. To get your income, find out what your um, what debt you have. Biggest thing for me is finding out what payment you're budgeting for and what payment you're comfortable because I'm not going to bury you in a home. So we're going to find 
we're going to work that backwards into what does that look like for a purchase price and then we'll talk about um all the all the variables of that then once we've determined hey we're ready to move forward now or maybe you need to pay off a couple things or things like that then we'll move forward with the application and um and then a pre-approval letter then you take that golden ticket and you go talk to beverly and then beverly's gonna help you from there mm -hmm. what does that look like typically to start uh so i love the way that you said you, you start with a lender because when people call me and they say hi i want to buy a house they say awesome first of all have you talked to another agent but the next question is have you talked to a lender yet so even if you start backwards and you start with a realtor we're going to send you right back to a lender because just like you said heather we want to know what is your your buying power what's your purchase power and that means how much are you approved for and it sounds kind of petty but you don't go to the store uh, not knowing how much money you have in your bank account you need to know what what kind of funds you have available and so when we as agents hopefully <laughs> we're sending you if you're getting a loan if you don't have cash you're going to go back to the, the lender and say hey we've got a first time home buyer here they need to get a pre-approval or a pre-qualification which there are uh two that those are two different things so quickly a pre-approval is uh, heather has already pulled the credit report uh she knows she's ch checked your job she knows that you are a good candidate whereas a pre-qualification she can run some preliminary numbers and it's kind of a stated uh, thing where you say you are who you are, you work where you work, you make how much you make, you don't have debts or you do have debts, so they're qualifying you for a job or my apologies for a loan. But really, we as agents, we want that pre approval, it's more of a, a solid number. So once you're finished with Heather, yeah, you come back to me and we say, okay, let's let's go look for a home. And I get a lot of folks who are first time home buyers and they get really nervous on what their agent knows. And I tell my folks, I know none of your finances. We do not talk about finances. I work very closely with uh, lenders like Heather, and they say this is what their pre-approval amount is. And I say, okay, great. And that is all I need to know. Uh, with this first time home buyer program, it's so amazing because there's so much miseducation out there. Like, oh, we need to have 25% down, where clearly that's, that's not the facts. So you can have no money down, but like Heather said, a uh, little bit of, of liquid assets does come into play. Uh, so before you, when I go into consults with my buyers, I let them know I would bank on having about $5,000, just liquid money or a gift from somebody that, that makes that because we've got things, um, closing costs, which a lot of times right now we're able to build that in to an offer. So some sellers are willing to pay this, but then also you're gonna have things like a, a home inspection which i always say is the best money you can spend before you buy a home because these home inspectors are they're on the roof they're looking at the foundation looking at the plumbing the electrical they're looking at all the things that i'm frankly not qualified to look at and they're letting you know their their opinions like you might want to get more of uh, more of an insight on this plumbing or there's a couple of things here you're gonna have to prepare for for after you close you know money you're, you're gonna need like oh you, you gotta have uh your the drain was backed up you know some of those things but and uh, i don't want to get too much into it but agents can um, help mitigate some of that so having some money for the the, the home inspection that's roughly 350 to 500 dollars but then also having an appraisal done and sometimes you can wrap that up into the loan as well and i'll let heather talk about that but yeah i work very closely with you and very closely with heather to make sure that you are comfortable because like she said we don't want you to be house poor we understand you have to live so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Needs to, be, needs to be comfortable. Absolutely. So then, so now you're, you're at the point where you're going to go find a home. A couple tips that I have on that is um, on the UFIRST website, we have a great um, search that you can search for homes that's live with the MLS. So it's real time listings. And then the thing that I would suggest to you is use Google Earth. Look at the home that way, see what's around it. And Right now we're not in a huge market where things are selling sight unseen so much anymore. And so, so you have, so there's a little bit of time. If you can, if you find like three or four homes that you're really interested in, go drive by them before having um, your, your agent set up a, a showing for you to see the home. Because oftentimes, like 
back in the 90s, my first home that I went to go look at, luckily it was my mother-in-law that was the agent, but we went out there just as a train was driving right behind the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we were both like, nope. <laughs> and, <laughs> anyways, and then it was also right next to uh, I-15 overpass. But back then I didn't have the Google Earth and all that stuff to look at. But it save, it'll save you time and and this you know disappointment of um, you know wasting time and, and your agent's time if you know just by pulling up that's not going to be the right house but anyways now you found the right house and it's awesome so now the contract comes back to to me and we run it through for a formal approval we we now have can pull up the tax value and and know how much the HOA is if there's things like that so we can run it through for a formal approval, then that you're doing your inspection um, before appraisal is ordered, but then appraisal and title, closing, and then woohoo! Yay, <laughs> party. Congratulations, you're a homeowner. <laughs> All right, so we went over a little bit, bit of this in, in the other um, screen was that we have a live feed of, of Utah, MLS, um, right from youfirst.com. And um, you can also set up parameters in there, the types of homes that you're interested in, and you will get updates, email updates that uh, meet your parameters so you know what new homes are on the market. Um, and so anyways, it, it's, it's a great website. And then if you have Additional questions, you can reach out to your agent, but sometimes there are notes on the back ends of the listing. So questions you specific questions you might have or school districts or things like that involved. Do you have anything to add to searching online? Of course I do. Of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, so some of you may or may not be aware that the National Association of Realtors has had some practice changes recently. And a part of those practice changes is you no longer get to go with an agent without signing some sort of a buyer agency document or a, it's called a limited showing agreement. And not to get too heavy into this, but back in the day, prior to two weeks ago, you could call up a realtor and say, hey, I wanna go see this home. And the agent would say, okay, well, let's get you in and you show the home and okay, see you later. So now when you call up an agent, we are a, a realtor you are required to sign either their buyer agency agreement, which states that you will work with this agent for the entirety until you find a home, or you can opt to sign a, a limited showing agreement, which gives the agent the right to show you that particular home or have, however many homes they, they've stipulated, and there's no uh, binding contract between you two. So this, uh, you first offers this great, you know, the, the, the MLS for you guys to look at. And just like Heather said, look on Google Earth, find out if it's something that you are comfortable with, you know, the neighborhood, uh, because oftentimes you won't, you might not want to sign anything with an agent, but you just want to see what it's by. So yeah, using uh, Google Earth, there's online capabilities, driving by, make sure it is something that you do want to take your own time uh, to go look at because yeah our time is our most valuable commodity and you can't get it back and nor can the agent so that's that's one of those important things these days awesome thank you all right so variables that affect your payment um so back up just a little bit here when you when you are pre-qualified to to purchase a home I'm really qualifying you for a payment so, because it's all, all about debt ratio and a payment that you're comfortable with. So, we work that backwards into what is, what does a purchase price look like? Oh, you can go to the next screen, sorry. Um, so, um, so we work that backwards. And so, what we're going to be dealing with is the actual loan amount. And then we're going to back, so say you're comfortable with a $2,500 payment. So from there, we want to back out HOA fees. We want to back out potential mortgage insurance, um, property taxes, homeowners insurance, and to get down to what a loan amount looks like. So variables that can affect your payment is how much you're putting down, whether or not there are HOA fees, mortgage insurance, um, and there's there's a couple different ways to, to eliminate mortgage insurance. Um, but a, a huge factor, and it's on another screen on here that we'll go over, is how much credit affects mortgage insurance. Um, 
And then property taxes is a variable in your payment. And homeowners insurance that you shop for. Um, and then you could, so there are such things out there as, as grants. And that is something that you, that's not through a lender, but, and if you can qualify for a grant and you're accepted, then the lender can use that and apply that towards your loan. And then home ready is an in, is something through um, conventional loans that is through Fannie Mae. And it's based on, it's income driven and location. So there's, um, there is a site out there that we can see if you would potentially based on your income and the area that you're looking in. What it does is it gives reduced interest rate and closing costs. All right, let's see the next one. Okay, so this is this is a little, I haven't updated this in, in a couple of years, but the, the basics are still true. So this is saying that on, you're putting 3% down on a conventional loan and you have a 760 FICO, you're looking at mortgage insurance of about 177. As opposed to if you have a 700 FICO, you're looking at mortgage insurance of about 340 a month. So this is where when I'm helping you with a pre-approval, um, potentially before we're pulling credit, is getting an idea, having you tell me what is your credit score? And there's things, and, and then we'll go over, are there things that we can do to improve your credit score while you're saving for um, money for your closing costs and your escrow setup and potential down payment that would get you in a better position. Um, so, so help structure to get you in a better position when you are ready to move forward. Yep. Thoughts on getting ready? Uh, yeah, like I have lots of thoughts. Oh, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I can talk all day on this stuff, of course. No, just like Heather said there, and I, a lot of people, I know I don't like getting into the nitty gritty of of numbers and percentages. So it's just so I just want to reiterate, which I probably will later, on chatting with your with, with Heather and chatting with an agent, even preliminarily, because I did read somewhere the other day that said first time home buyers, it typically takes two years until that well, from when that seed has been planted on, oh I want to buy a home until they actually are buying a home because they don't know all of what they're going over here today. So this is super beneficial for you guys. Uh, so don't get bogged down by these numbers. It's going to take some time. And if your credit score isn't where you want it to be, that's okay. But still talk to a lender. It's and correct me if I'm wrong. It's no cost. Uh, it just a little bit of time uh, to, to come chat with Heather, set up an appointment, maybe make a phone conversation with her. Happen. Uh, but you need to know where you stand. Have her pull your credit, even though it's kind of a scary thing. Uh, have her pull your credit and and look at some of your debt to income to to figure things out. You want to make sure you know what you're saving for instead of just willy nilly. We need to save you know three percent or, or however much closing costs are. Have these tough conversations so that you are better prepared. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So when you're when you're looking at homes, additional things that you'll want to, to contemplate or keep in mind is um, the cost of, of the loan itself. And so the loan cost, the escrow setup, but even bigger than that, when you're searching for a home is you're looking at a brand new home. Are you going to need to put gates in? Are you going to need to put a sprinkler system in? Are you going to need to put a backyard? But in the non-existing homes, um, the appliances are expected to be in, in working order, but what what's a life expectancy left on the refrigerator, the stove, things like that? So near future repairs would be things like like appliances. And some uh, refrigerators aren't actually standard in all home purchases, so you need to really pay attention. Do you need to buy a refrigerator? Um, and then things just like if you're going from an apartment to a home with a yard, now do you need to get a lawnmower and tool, yard tools and all of that stuff? <laughs> wow, I've never even thought of that. What a great, what a great thing to bring up. So true. And yeah, just like Heather said, so with new build homes, 
there typically is not a refrigerator, there typically are not window coverings, and there typically is no backyard, you just get dirt. So, and of course, other than having a refrigerator, these things are not absolutely necessary in your home, but yeah, you wanna make sure that you're gonna have money left over or that you'll have a means to buy these things that are important to you. So again, you'll work closely with your agent, and when you're looking at these homes, put some of these things on your, your radar, uh, to ask your agent and hopefully you work with somebody like me or just me in general uh, where we are helping you we're holding your hand along this process and bringing things into your awareness that you you're not you know in the market to, to know that's why you have these professionals so i always say lean very very heavily on your lenders and your realtors and ask those questions i tell people there's no such thing as a dumb question you don't do this every day whereas people like heather and i we do this every day and we have seen I would say we've seen it all, but every <laughs> transaction is different, every person is different. So yeah, make sure you're asking questions whether you think it's silly or not. It might be something that we forgot to go over uh, and it will be a very good question. It will help you feel educated about it. So yeah, always uh, step out of your comfort zone and ask the questions. So there is a thing on here about HOA assessment. You do wanna do some due diligence if you're purchasing a, a property that has an HOA. Um, take, a, take a look at, at the budget and ask questions you know how how often have have the hoas increased what are some future repairs that are expected like do they need to redo all the roofs do they need to do the asphalt things like that it, it's okay to ask questions on the stability of the hoa and if it's a very high hoa in an older area then i would make sure you're doing a extra due diligence on that and on that note again these are things that you you will not know so ask your agent about that and 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 we can't cover everything but we can cover a lot of information so not to scare you but i recently um, was aware of one these people had closed on a property in an, in, a, in an hoa and the very next day the board decided to have an assessment done of five thousand dollars <laughs> So welcome to home ownership. You now have 60 days to pay an additional $5,000. Luckily, I say luckily, it's still money, but these people were investors. They paid cash for the property. So I hope that they've got an extra five k sitting around, but even still, we do our best to dig into these uh, HOA items, uh, but we it's impossible for us to predict or dictate everything. So my best uh, advice on, on working in an HOA, even not an HOA, we have fair housing laws as realtors that we cannot uh, mention certain things. I always urge my people to, just like Heather said, get on Google, invest the area, investigate your, your these homes, and go talk to the neighbors. It might sound kind of silly, but if you're in an HOA, go talk to the neighbor. How do you guys like the HOA? Are they are they easy to work with? What do they maintain? Or do they keep things uh, pretty well maintained? What's just been their experience? So I always find that that, that true uh, word of mouth or that conversation with the neighbor is very, very helpful. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so this is all Beverly. <laughs> oh, all right, so these numbers, everybody I'm sure is checked out right now. So let's skip down to the, the second line, average list price and the third line, median list price. So right now, the average list price in Washington County is $862,728, which uh, I am, my, uh, my jaw is on the floor. Uh, whereas last year it was $807,000, we'll just round down, $807,000. So that's average list price. The median list price uh, is $649,000. So the average is, going back to some high school here, is uh, the collective of all, every single property in Washington County, and then divide, divided by how many properties that actually is. Whereas the median price takes the, the very middle of all of the prices. So I'm talking the, the trailers that are lower priced up to your multi-million dollar properties. So I really like to look at the median list price because now we know what just what the, the middle of the road is. So middle of the road is a little easier to swallow, 649,000. But if you're a first time home buyer, that is absolutely, and in my in my uh, my realm of things, that's kind of unattainable. I don't have $649,000. I may or may not be able to get a loan for $649,000, of course, depending on my credit and my income. But what I want you to look at is the median sales price. So $535,000, and this was for July, so this year, last month, $535,000. Our, our median priced home in Washington County is half a million dollars. Uh, back before COVID, 
this was in uh, like $300,000 range. So the one thing I, I try to hammer in into my clients and my customers is stop timing the market. You need to take control of, of what you want to do right now, regardless of what's going on. So if you're not sure if you can comfortably make a payment on, we'll just use that median sale price on $535,000, talk to Heather. Hey, Heather, run my credit, run my debt to income, run all these things and tell me what my price point is. And let's go from there because a lot of people don't know what their purchase power is. So again, ask those questions. But uh, anything under about $400,000 these days, we uh, realtors call quote unquote affordable, which is still a joke to me because that's not affordable <laughs> to so many people. Yeah. So it is, I'm not going to lie, it is uh, first time local home buyers. That's what I specialize in. It is a really, really tough market and you might get buyer fatigue waiting and looking at the, the properties that they need some repairing done. Uh, and just and waiting for a property that's going to come on the market. So stay uh, patient and find me or Heather and, or another agent you feel comfortable with and reach out to them. Make sure they've got you on, we call it a drip search, where properties within your parameters, they come online and they're immediately sent to you. Uh, you're going to get immediately notified of them. So that way you're not looking at the MLS all day, every day. But again, back to not timing the market. Yes, we've got elections coming up. Yes, the interest rate is higher than we're used to. Yes, property prices are higher than we're used to. Uh, but there's this quote, if you waited to leave the house until every stoplight was green, you would never leave the house. So real estate is a game. It's going up and down, up and down. But in the end, it's always appreciating. You can't buy anything these days for the price that you paid you know, back in the 80s. But gosh, even 2019, we cannot predict what's going on. People ask me, well, what's going to happen next year? And I say, oh, darn, my crystal ball just broke yesterday. You missed me by a couple hours, but can you play the game? You can only play the game if you put your piece on the board. So ask the questions, figure it out, and then work from there. You might not be able to uh, have uh, a payment amount that you're comfortable with right now. That's okay. Now you know what you're, you're going towards. So just ask questions, get educated, and, and stay vigilant. Don't let these numbers scare you. Uh, I again, I work with first time home buyers. I recently put one under contract the other day for $246,000. It's a cute three bedroom, two bath. Yes, it's a, a townhouse, but that's okay. Your first home is usually never your, your forever home. You're using this as a stepping stone. Uh, you're going to build equity, you're going to build value in that home. And then if you can stay in it for at least two years, then call me up and let's start looking for something else. But the two years is the magical number for tax purposes. If you can deal with the home for two years and it's a good, sound, stable property, let's just get you on that game board, put your piece on the board, and let's let's go. Love it. Thank yeah. you. Thing that with the even though the median sales price is five thirty five, keeping in mind that's the middle, uh -huh. so there's plenty below that, yeah, <laughs> which, is, which is awesome. Um, and I was in a economic housing outlook this morning, and even though this is Washington County, the Salt Lake Salt Lake County numbers are very similar. They're not a whole lot different. All right, so why now? So Beverly just covered that actually very, very well. And when, whenever somebody asks me when is the right time to buy a home, my answer is always the same, when you are ready. Mm -hmm. And and that's, it. she said it, said it the same, just in, in different words, it's when you, when it's right for your family, right for you individually, when it, when you're ready, that's the best time to buy. Absolutely, and I agree. And of course, you know I like to talk, but just to, to ride on those coattails, when you're ready, it, it's not. It might not be right now, but you need to get the information, and that starts with a conversation with Heather, and make sure that you've got the factors worked in. But please, please, please don't wait for the quote unquote market to crash <laughs> or rates to, to come down or rates to come down or a certain person to get into office. That has, that's not going to do anything for you. People who I talked to before COVID happened, oh, we're going to wait for the market to crash. I'm like, what? Well, the market's not crashing. And plus when in real estate, we don't have a one day it's hot, the next day we're, we're in, you know, the, the depths of of heck, if you will, uh, it's a slow progression downward. It takes years for us to get down to a point where we start getting nervous. So take, again, I, I said this before, take control of your life, of your future. Don't wait for other outside influences. Uh, and here's a little tip. When interest is high, price points are lower. And when price points are higher, interest tends to be lower. So waiting for the interest to come down, that's not a great strategy because what's going to happen, price points are going to start to go up. 
And mathematically speaking, you want a higher interest rate versus a higher priced home because interest will fluctuate and hopefully they will come down someday lower uh, or lower than you currently got yours in and you can refinance. Whereas you pay this price for the house, it doesn't matter if you bought it and 10 days later now it's worth $100,000. No, that's you pay that price regardless. So buy the home when you feel ready, when you feel comfortable, but please don't dictate what you think is gonna happen or listen to friends saying, oh, wait for the market to crash <laughs> because if you wait for that to happen, it's never gonna happen and it could get worse. Whereas right now, you know what's happening. This is the price point, this is the interest rate, Let's make it happen. <laughs> yep. Marry the house and date the rate. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. So, um, so far, well, James, do we have any questions? My screen, I don't see if we have any questions. Yeah, we have one. Um, we have oh. from Deb. She she says, uh, if my husband and I are buying a home, are both of our credit scores affecting these numbers? Yes. Yeah, so with a with a mortgage loan, we pull all three bureaus for both applicants and the lowest middle FICO score is what is used is what we have to use and i'm not a lender so this is heather correct me if i'm wrong sometimes you can use both of them sometimes it's more beneficial just to use one if a, a spouse or a significant other or just a co-signer is not doing your 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 buying power any good then it might just be better to to use your own uh, credit score and, and not have a, a, a co-signer on there yeah that is a lot of times so when i'm helping you people with pre-approvals is we see if both both incomes are needed and if they're not i strongly suggest not tying up both of your debt ratios with the same debt that allows the other person to, to go to car loans or investment properties or things like that but that's a conversation that we'll have during pre-approval of what makes sense you'd both be on the final deed so you're both owners of the house but you're not both on the loan it if it's not necessary that was a great question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, right now, we don't actually. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, James will be sending out a link to to rewatch us if you wanted to re-listen to us. Um, so, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.